everybody, welcome back to Discovering After Effects. I'm Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. And in this lesson, we're going to learn about pre-composing, okay, or pre-comping. People call it that too. It doesn't matter what you call it because it does the same thing. Here I have this little graphic. It's just a logo on top of my background here. And it's made out of five layers. So I have my cyan layer and my fabric layer, which is laid over my cyan layer. I have my font right here, and I have a red solid with a texture used as a luma mat to kind of match the texture of my font. So let's say I was making a project where I had to reuse this logo quite a bit. I could always make a new comp and then go to my comp again and hit Command C, and copy this, and Command V, and there it is but things have gotten weird and okay there it is and I need to scale this okay basically you can already see it's a pain so I'm going to show you how we can use pre-comping to make this a little bit easier so if I select my three layers here that make up my logo and I go up to layer pre-compose I can also hit shift command C or shift control C on Windows I can pre-compose this. And here's my little pre-compose window that pops up. Right now we only have one option, move all attributes into the new composition. And so I'll say, okay, I'll call this logo and I'll hit okay. So something pretty interesting happens here. Not only did this turn three layers into one layer, but this one layer is the size of my comp. And so I can click anywhere on this layer and I can move it around I don't necessarily have to click on the alpha channel here so another interesting thing is this layer is actually another composition and so I can double click and I enter the comp and so here are my original layers just as I had them and I can still come in and edit them and that's great but then it takes this comp and it puts it inside the comp that I had and so obviously what's really cool is I don't have to worry about three layers, but what's even cooler is this is really easy to reuse now. When I make a pre-comp, it shows up in my project window here. So I just need to, so here's my logo pre-comp. You'll see it shows up right there. So now I can make a new composition. Let's say I were making a DVD menu or something like that. It's really easy to reuse. I just drag the logo on there and then I can scale it down. And it treats this just like if I rendered an image. I could obviously solo this layer and go to my render queue and output a TIFF or a PNG or something. But there's no need to do that. I can just pre-compose it and I have this element that I can reuse. And another really cool thing is this comp is treated just like a layer or an image and I can add any effect I want to it. So maybe I want to blur it with a fast blur. So I can apply that effect to that layer, but if I double click on this, everything's still the same because we're still using this common element, this common comp. And the cool thing about this is when I enter this logo comp that's nested inside of all these other comps, I can edit it. And let's say I want to change my ramp that's on my layers to a green ramp, green and blue, like that. Maybe I want to make this solid. kind of greenish. So there I have my, my green logo. So I just changed one comp, but it filters down to all the comps that it's nested in. So very, very useful for common elements as well as organization. Kind of similar to this is making a placeholder. And let me show you what I mean. So if I make a new comp, and I'll make a solid, I don't know, I'll just make a background, make it look not weird, I guess. And then I'll have pink. And this will be my placeholder. So now I'm going to take this solid and I'm going to scale it down and move it over here. OK? So there it is. And maybe I want to put some text here. We have an awesome 80s <laughs> horrible looking DVD menu. But that's not the point. So right here, I basically roughed out that that's where I'm going to put a movie clip. And so. Maybe I don't have the movie clip yet, but I know that's where it's going to go. Maybe it's for a client and they have the movie clip. 
So what I can do is select this layer and pre-compose it. So command shift C and my pre-compose window comes up. I'm gonna call this placeholder and I have a couple options. There's leave all attributes and move all attributes. And here's the difference between those two. If I leave all the attributes, you see that this placeholder has a certain position and a certain scale and what the heck, we'll rotate it a little bit. So there's a position scale and rotation of this placeholder. If I pre-compose this and I leave all the attributes in comp eight, it's gonna make a pre-comp, but it's gonna scale, rotate, and position this pre-comp just like this solid. And so I'll hit okay. And nothing really changes except for this is now a comp. And my little, my little selection box is around this solid. And so now I can look at my position is the same scale, still at 58.4, rotation still at negative four. And if I double click this placeholder, it's full screen. So it's just kind of giving you a, a clean layer here. And then I can build my comp. And so maybe that's my frame. And I'll look at comp eight again. And there's my frame, scaled and rotated just right. And of course I can still mess with this. I'm not locked into it. So it just takes all the properties that were on this solid and it puts it on the comp. Might be a little bit confusing, but if you do it a couple times, you'll understand it. So what's the difference between moving attributes and leaving attributes? So right now this is leaving attributes. But if I make a new solid, I'll make this one yellow because I feel like making the ugliest possible thing. Now I'm going to scale this down and rotate it. So now if I take this solid and I pre-compose it, moving attributes, and I move all the attributes to the new comp, it's going to take this layer and it's simply going to nest it in that new comp. So I'm going to hit OK. And it doesn't look like anything changes, but here's my selection handles around the entire frame. And if I look at my position, scale rotation, they're all reset to the defaults. I can double click on here. And here's my solid, still rotated, still moved, still scaled. So it's just kind of grouping this in its own layer. So depending on what you're planning on doing with your pre-comp, that's gonna determine if you move or leave your attributes. So let's say I do make my placeholder here and I'll make it a slightly less hideous color. And I'll pre-comp this, and I'll actually call this placeholder. So I can take my movie now and just drop it in this comp. And I can keep my solid if I want to, or I can delete it. Maybe I'll make a frame. So I'll just mask this out and tell it to subtract. So there's my frame. And I'll scale this down to something that is better. So there's Guy on the River with his hat. This is actually my dad for the record. Yeah, he doesn't know that he's actually the star of this awesome 90s DVD menu. Um, all I really need is like a pink jaggedy border and this would be nice and hideous. So that's exciting. But anyway, that's how you do a placeholder. And anytime I wanna switch out the video, I can just drag a new video onto my placeholder. And so there's, so I can switch it out for a movie of a dog continue to move this and scale this and mess it up and not have to worry about doing all that work again if I want to change the video. So something else I want to touch on really quick is collapsing a bunch of layers to make one layer. So even though we kind of been doing that, there's some really cool stuff you can do by collapsing a bunch of layers into one. So I'm going to go back to my shot from our mats tutorial and I've done a little bit of work in making mats for the major elements in this scene. So these are all on separate layers, which is a good way to do it but there's a bunch of them. And so right now these are set up pretty well to work for alpha mats. They give an alpha channel for each object here, but I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that I use all the time to add some really neat realistic effects to this scene. So what I'm gonna do is make a depth map from all of these layers. So basically I'm gonna take each layer and I'm gonna add a ramp and go to generate ramp and this just adds a gradient. And I can use the brightness of this ramp to map the depth of these objects away from the camera. And so in my footage, this is the closest thing to me right now, this little corner. And then it kind of goes off into the distance because it's the ground plane. And so I'm just gonna do this ground plane really quick. And white is gonna be close to me and black is far away. 
So I know that the farthest thing away from me is going to be back here. And so I don't want to make this pure black. I'm going to make it, I don't know, like halfway gray, something like that. And so I'm just kind of doing this by hand. White is closer, darker is farther away. So I spent a bunch more time doing that on each layer. And here's what it ends up looking like. So closest thing is white, farthest thing is black, and grays in between. And I definitely could have got more detailed because this goes back a little bit farther, but I got lazy. So, so I can take all these layers, looks like 13 layers. So I can take all these 13 layers and I can pre-compose them and I'll just move all attributes and I'll say depth, boom. So there's one layer to use as my depth mat. Remember we were talking about luma mats. I can set this track mat to be a luma mat and it can kind of get darker as it goes away, or it can be darker closer to you, which is a little bit weird. I built this Luma mat from a whole bunch of solids and then pre-composed them into one layer so I could use it as a mat. But what do you do with a depth map? Check this out. I can add realistic fog to this scene by just making a new solid and I'll make it eh, bluish white and I'll put it under my depth layer and I'm just gonna make this a Luma inverted mat because I know that black is farther away and I want this fog to build up as I can see farther away. So I'm gonna hit Luma inverted and boom, there's pretty good looking fog just by using this solid. Another really cool thing I can do with a depth map is add depth of field. So I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer and I'll go to blur and sharpen camera lens blur. Camera lens blur is really cool because not only does it give you a realistic lens blur effect, but you can actually map the depth of the scene and you can rack focus. So I'm gonna go to my blur map layer and I'm gonna hit depth. And I'm gonna bring up the blur radius just so you can see it a little easier. So now I can rack the focus in my footage and get this shallow depth of field effect just by using this adjustment layer and my depth map. So pretty cool. And of course, all my hard work is still intact and I can still copy mats and paste them and, and it's there for me to use. So I know that's a lot of stuff, but pre-comps are super useful, super important. And if you understand them, you can use them in a really cool way and make your life easier. I think that's going to about do it for me. I'm Casey Ferris with RampantDesignTools.com. Catch you later.